uh, the Mexican government uh, to make sure that it happens, because President Calderon recognizes that he has responsibilities on his side of the border as well. And the last point I'll make uh, on this topic is this. Uh, you know, I think all of us recognize that uh, some of the pressures with respect to immigration just arise out of economics. People in Mexico are looking for opportunity, and they feel that they can make more money here in the United States. Um, what we also have to recognize, and I talked about this with President Calderon, is every nation are, also has the right to secure its borders and make orderly decisions about who comes in and who comes out. And the, the key here is for us to keep both principles in mind, that, you know, people want to f uh, find a better life uh, where they can, and if they have opportunity in America, they're going to want to come here. We can't just try to use force to prevent that. On the other hand, the United States has to be able to make determinations about who comes in and who comes out in an orderly fashion. And if we are both a nation of laws and a nation of immigrants, uh, then I think we will not only be true to our core values, but we're also going to be creating uh, a more prosperous future uh, for everybody. Yep. The Mexico Radio Formula, por favor, Israel. Israel has a question. President Obama. President Obama. Several issues, but uh, not to detour from the same topic. I would like to know if you have already a strategy plan uh, in regards to the Arizona law, uh, because it is violating the fundamental rights of people. How are you going to turn around this uh, trend, President Obama, that has been shown in different states of the United States against migrants? And this migratory reform that you're talking about, to know when it will be taken to Congress and what's the scope that it will have. The second area regarding security, President Obama, I would like to know how do you value the battle against organized crime that President Calderon is having? Has this been a success? What is it missing? And following this issue, to know if you have seen that the weapons that illegally cross from the United States to Mexico uh, are the ones that are used by the organized crime people in Mexico. Shouldn't there be an initiative that will regulate uh, guns as they are sold? If, is there going to be a ban? Con uh, a pretty comprehensive answer uh, earlier. So I'm just going to take your second question. Uh, and that is the issue of security. This is obviously a shared concern uh, and is going to require shared effort uh, on the part of both of our nations. Uh, I said the first time I met President Calderon, and have said ever since, that uh, I greatly admire his courage, his dedication, his tenacity in trying to deal with the drug traffickers and cartels that have created such a public safety uh, crisis uh, in many communities within Mexico. Uh, as we pointed out, this is not just an issue of the drug trade. This is an issue of how is it affecting people's day-to-day -day lives within Mexico. Uh, and the Mexican people have an interest in dealing with this. Uh, and he has stood up consistently uh, because he recognizes that uh, his foremost job, his, his most important task as president is to keep the Mexican people safe. So we are fully supportive of the efforts that he's been making. Uh, we have had extensive collaboration over the last uh, several years in making sure that uh, in a way that respects Mexico's sovereignty, we are responsive to whatever requests are made by the Calderon administration uh, to the extent that we can help through the Merida Initiative provide equipment, uh, provide training, provide uh, technologies that can help in these efforts, uh, we have done so. And we will continue to coordinate uh, as effectively as we can with uh, the Calderon administration to make sure that 
uh, we deal with this problem. Now, as you point out, this is not just a problem in Mexico. It is a problem that the United States has to address. And the two things that we have to address, and I've said this when I was in Mexico, and I'll repeat here, uh, it is absolutely true that U.S. demand for drugs helps to drive this public safety crisis within Mexico. And so we've got an obligation not to uh, drive the demand side of the equation. Uh, and so most recently we've uh, put forward our new strategy that emphasizes not just enforcement but also prevention, also treatment, so that we can drive down demand and weaken the grip that these drug cartels have. The second aspect of this uh, that we have to deal with is the southbound flows from the United States of both weapons and cash that helps to empower these drug cartels. Uh, and so what I've directed my uh, Department of Homeland Security, uh, ATF, all our various agencies that have responsibilities in these areas to do is to ramp up uh, our efforts at interdicting these southern flows. And I already mentioned to you, for example, uh, we've now instituted a policy where we are uh, searching 100 percent of rail cargo that's going south. Uh, that is a significant uh, investment of law enforcement resources on our part, but it's the right thing to do. Uh, we want to crack down on illegal gun dealers who are selling uh, weapons into Mexico. Uh, all those are steps that we are doing in coordination uh, with the Calderon government, and we will continue to uh, emphasize the importance uh, not only to Mexico but also to the United States of tackling this problem. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.